Hello, hello, happy Wellness Wellbeing Wednesday, everybody. I think I'm here. I think I actually have it with some Wi-Fi and uh, internet so that I can come to you for one of the final on-site uh, lives for you. We are shouting out from Blowing Rock, North Carolina in the Blue Ridge Mountains, one of the top luxury wellness destinations um, that I say that is in the world. And so I am just excited that I have committed to come to you live every Wednesday for about seven to 10 minutes. And I'm super excited just to come to you and share with you wellness tips answer questions and just be here for you be here for you however it is that you see that you might need so we are actually celebrating this month if you heard me say yesterday national caregivers month it is national alzheimer's disease month and today is national stress awareness month so i am so wanting to just make sure that we um, acknowledge that especially for those around us that may be affected in those areas and this month as we start november our series we are going to do part three for embracing grace with the positivity of nonviolent communication. And that nonviolent communication is NVC that you will have me refer to. And today we are discussing connecting compassionately with others. And I can just say that even traveling and all the hiccups and things that go through, I am just really have been um, embracing and meditating on that about com connecting compassionately. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Michelle Maynard MacArthur and I am your hospitality health and wellness strategist that is here to help guide you through a positive process for change with a holistic lean approach from the inside out. And that lean stands for lifestyle, exercise, attitude, and nutrition, while taking and showing you to the top luxury wellness destinations all over the world. I am the founder and CEO for MacArthur Accommodations, and I am here devoted to helping you executives, you leaders, you entrepreneurs um, to be healthy, to help you with balancing out that mind, body, and soul so that you can really have that self-care while you are doing that good balance for family, work, play, and of course, most important, yourself. So I am really hoping that all of this does bring you great value and I wanna share with you my purpose, my passion, and my why. And that why is being a survivor, a survivor of a progressive degenerative neuromuscular disorder, along with depression for over 30 years now, I was told to get my affairs in order. And I get to stand here today in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I hope this is giving you a beautiful backdrop right here so that you can see those Blue Ridge Mountains behind me. Um, you may notice some swaying, uh, some uncomfortable pauses, too many ums, whatever that might be. I just ask for your grace that uh, know that I usually always do get back on track. I'm a little shaky today. It is cold outside, but it is beautiful and I like nothing better than to be in nature. And this is definitely nature with some great clean mountain air. And I do this because I am an international certified health and wellness coach. And I also have that to complement my certification in traditional Chinese medicine, along with a 30 plus year career in hospitality, hotels, tourism, destinations. I am also a believer, a mother, an entrepreneur, and I am, of course, a world-class traveler. So I'm so excited that you are joining in with me today. I hope that this is definitely bringing you some great value for the tips that I have that we are bringing to you by MacArthur Accommodations. And MacArthur Accommodations, I am the founder and CEO. 
and we are a hospitality, health and wellness, coaching and consulting advisement company that specializes in overall optimal health and, um, health and wellness worldwide with those innovations to reflect, recharge, and renew yourself one step at a time. We are here to help you with uh, what our hashtag is, creating immunity for life. So I welcome you to come join our immunity community for these wonderful tips that we bring to you, free specials and uh, discounts. Um, as well as some great workshops that we have coming in later on this month. So today my wellness tips, as I mentioned, is about connecting compassionately with others. Five tips for you today. And tip number one is number one, remembering the specialness of what we are. The nonviolent communication's most important use may be in developing that self-compassion. When we are internally silent towards ourselves, it is difficult to genuinely be compassionate to others. Using nonviolent communication to evaluate ourselves in ways that engender growth rather than self-hatred utilize that evaluating uh, and remembering the specialness of what we are tip number two for you today is evaluating ourselves when we've been less than perfect do you ever recall is my big question an occasion a recent occasion when you did something that you wish you had not we all have well we've been taught and what I love about um, how Dr. Rosenberg really talks about this in his book, Nonviolent Communication, is that we have been taught to judge ourselves, to judge ourselves in ways that imply what we did was wrong or bad. Our self-admonition, admonishment, implicitly assumes we deserve to suffer for what we've done. rather than benefiting from our mistakes. And when we benefit from our mistakes, what happens then? We get to learn and we get to grow. And that helps guide us into that positive process for change. Violent words that we commonly use to evaluate ourselves usually get deeply ingrained in our consciousness. That many of us cannot even imagine living without. But using the word should, I should have, I shouldn't have, I just encourage you to take the exercise to try to avoid the shoulding of ourselves. Try to avoid saying I should have, I shouldn't have, and see how you do with that. Tip number three for you today is translating self judgments and inner demands. When we communicate with ourselves through inner judgment, blame, demand, our self-concept gives us the feeling more like a chair than being a human. Self-judgments, like all judgments, are like tragic expressions of unmet needs. So if you really look about that, those judgments and your unmet needs, and just resonate on that for a moment, the challenge when doing something that is not enriching to our life is to evaluate ourselves moment by moment and really inspire the change. Inspire that change in the direction in which we go with respect and compassion. Tip number four for you today is nonviolent communication in the morning. When we have nonviolent communication in the morning, what happens? We're learning and training ourselves to translate judgments when conversing and recognizing the judgmental self-talk, focusing on our attention of those underlining needs. The impact of our feelings 
is very different from the disconnection of guilt, shame, and even depression. And when we create consciousness, it is focused on our needs. That is where self-care comes from. And we are actually naturally stimulated towards the creative possibilities that all tie into that self-care. Tip number five for you today and my final tip that I'm going to share in these beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains right behind me is self-forgiveness. Self-forgiveness is following up on a process of mourning with self-forgiveness and tuning, turning our attention to the part of self which we choose to act in the way that is led to a specific situation or circumstance that may have happened within that nonviolent communication and connecting compassionately with others. Listening empathet emphatically, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, listening emphatically to ourselves, it allows us to hear our underlining needs. Get yourself into that uh, place so you can understand and really hear what your needs are. Because, and then focus on self-forgiveness. Self-forgiveness occurs in the moment the empathetic connection is actually made. When you're giving yourself that empathy and you are embracing it. And an important aspect of self-compassion is the ability to emphatically hold our own regrets and our past actions, take note, acknowledge them, hold those regrets, moving them through the process of the mourning and the forgiveness. And then what happens? Learning, growth happens. So these are my five wellness tips for you today. I am so glad that I have been able to come to you on location, beautiful wellness luxury destination to share these wellness tips with you. I hope that they have brought you great value. Please like, comment, share, tell me, show me some love and tell me if there's anything that's resonated with you or if there's something that you would really like to hear about or to talk about and to get some tips on. Don't forget to join our immunity community. Go to www.immunityforlife.net and join because we are going to have lots of freebies, special discounts, and tips all on the blog. And I'm so grateful that we got to bring these to you. We've got some amazing workshops. I hope you tune in and sign up for those. And I am going to sign out wishing you guys a beautiful, prosperous, productive day. And thank you so much. And may you just enjoy this as I'm going to take it once around and I'm going to show you the beauty one more time before we leave out so that you can really just soak in some of God's beauty. May you all be blessed. Thank you again. Wishing you many abundant blessings. Bye-bye.